Central banks around the world have injected money into the economy at a record pace to try to fight a global recession triggered by the coronavirus pandemic. Turn out to the heated debate over how to boost our economy and provide much needed relief to millions of Americans impacted by the pandemic. Since mid-March, the Federal Reserve's balance sheet has ballooned from $4 trillion to around $7 trillion, equal to about one-third of the value of the entire American economy. Where does the money come from? And what happens when we explode our deficit? So I'll say it again. Today, as we speak, this is July 2021. Every dollar printed by the or spent by the U.S. government, 60% is fake. 60% are fake dollars. So in 1971, Nixon took the dollar off the gold standard. So what did that mean? That meant the U.S. government, the U.S. Treasury, could now print money. So they, the U.S. Treasury would sell a bond to the Fed. Over here would be the Bank of England, Bank of Japan, ECB, and all this. So in 71, it was the U.S., not anybody else, basically screwed the world economy. You know, I, don't, I don't know how much longer this financial system can last. Lenin said years and years ago, before Stalin, the best way to kill capitalism is to debauch the currency. I think there's something driving it, something driving me too. And I see the end and I see the end coming. If you drive interest rates down to zero and all the countries print money like crazy, it's lifted the asset boat for everybody. And I think it really is, a, they didn't have anything else to do in the Great Recession. And so they took the only weapon they had and used it aggressively. I don't think we should quarrel with that. It did cause the people who were already rich to get richer. And, and but that wasn't done on purpose or anything like that. And I think that will correct automatic, automatically. 1971, President Nixon took the dollar off the gold standard. They can print as much as they like. Then they tell you, so that you go to school, you get a job, you become an employee. You pay taxes because you're working for money. Then they tell you to save money. Do you know why they tell you to save money? Because the system of banking, your, it's nothing to do with communism or capitalism. It's the banks run the world. The rich run the world. They don't care if you're communist or capitalist. So when you save, so let's say you save $1 US or one euro, one yen, the banking system can lend out 10. So the entire system is called the fractional reserve system. The fractional reserve system is also printing money. And then they tell you to save money. So they, they want you to save money so they can lend out your money 10 times. So your dollar became worthless 10 times over. They used to pay you 10% interest on your money. Now it's at best 1%. And they're still lending it out 10 times. So that's why you don't save money is because your money is becoming worth less and less and less and less and less. The banks are getting richer and richer and richer. Then they tax you on that interest you they pay you, that 1% interest if they pay you that much. Japan is zero. And the Japanese are so stupid, they still save money. How stupid is that? So when they lend out money, that's how money is created. Money is debt. The United States is destroying the U.S. dollar. And in 1944, the U.S. dollar became the reserve currency of the world. So back basically, in 1944, the U.S. government or the U.S. Treasury promised the world the dollar would be backed by gold. And they broke that in 1971, so now they can print as much as they want. So America broke its promise to the world because they promised the U.S. dollar would be as good as gold, but today it isn't. So I'll say it again. Today, as we speak, this is July 2021. Every dollar printed by the or spent by the U.S. government, 60% is fake. 60% are fake dollars. So it puts America into a bubble. Everybody feels happy. China ships to us. Aussie ships to us. You know, everybody's happy as Larry, except they're drunk as skunks. The Fed is incompetent. They can't save us. It's gone too far. They've been printing money since 1971. And instead of fixing the problem, they just kept making the problem worse. So let me give you an idea how much 
a trillion is and why I'm saying the Fed is incompetent and dying. So a trillion dollars is a lot of money. And all you have to do today is hit a button. You know, you don't even have to print it anymore. You just hit a button and say, one trillion, two a trillion. So if you spent a dollar every second, it would take you 35,000 years to spend a trillion dollars. I think they just printed three or four trillion dollars in the last few months. Let me tell you something. One dollar a minute or a second, I forget what it is, I'll check that out, but it's either a minute or a second. For 35,000 years is a long time, and it takes them less than a second to do it. The United States, January 6, 2020 to January 4th, 2021. Coming straight from the Fed, we started this period with around 4 trillion US dollars in the system. One year later, that number is at 6.7 trillion dollars. Meaning that over 40% of all US dollars were printed in just the last 12 months. And from the looks of it, no one seems to be in a rush to slow things down. A sweeping nearly $2 trillion relief package to tackle this pandemic, one of the largest in our nation's history. In fact, no one is really talking about this at all. And right now, nobody seems to think that this is a problem. People seem to think that we've stumbled on the equivalent of a monetary fountain of youth. People like to call it modern monetary theory, which is we can have whatever we want as long as government prints the money to pay for it, that there's no limit that government is free as long as they print money. Unfortunately, the, pr the Fed is printing trillions and they're going to pay you nothing for your savings. I mean, you know, when I was a kid, I got 15% on my savings. Today, you get nothing. Prices of gold, sir, and Bitcoin will crash too. U.S. dollar to rise. Be patient. Massive money printing ahead, destroying the dollar. Time to buy more gold, silver, and Bitcoin. So I'm asked this question, okay, everything everything went up, everything's inflated. So I went in, since I played Monopoly as a young boy, I went into investing in real estate. The reason I like real estate is because I can use debt. You know, debt is tax-free money. I know everybody says, get out of debt, but you have to know what you're doing. I don't recommend it, but I borrow as much as I like because it's tax-free. Let's say I borrow a million dollars. It's a tax-free million dollars. If I had to work for a million dollars, it cost me $2 million because I had to pay the taxes on it. So debt is tax-free money, and with that, I buy real estate. But everything has gone up, and today I'm a little spooked because the last deal that Ken McElroy and I worked on, it was a $30 million property. And because people are so desperate for anything, so the bidding started, it went to 32 million, and we stayed in at 32 million, then it hit 34 million, and at that point we got out. It didn't make sense at 34 million, and the property ultimately sold for 36 million. That's a bubble. It doesn't make sense. 